Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. Days after the NNPC GMD promised adequate supply of petroleum products, queues returned to petrol stations in parts of Nigeria following scarcity. National Assembly passes 2018 to 2020 medium term expenditure framework, raises benchmark price of crude oil. Court orders temporary forfeiture of $4.7 million worth of property in Lagos, links to former Petroleum Minister Diazani Alice in Madriki. A new special counsel, Robert Miller, orders German Bank to provide account records owned by President Donald Trump. quick reminder that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. Also, please log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Now we have some of the pictures that you sent in to our eyewitness portal, beginning with this one from Gumo in Jigar State, showing people celebrating what our eyewitness reporter calls the Malud Festival. Next is this image from Maiduguri, the Borno State Capital, showing a lit bulb. Our eyewitness reporter who sent this says they now enjoy 24-hour electricity supply in this area and commends the efforts of government. Our next image is from Yola in Adama State, showing the poor state of a primary school. Our eyewitness reporter wants the state government to do something about this. From Alhaji, Alhaja Eleshi along Ogudojota Road in Lagos State comes our next image showing a fallen electricity pole. According to our eyewitness reporter, these cables still carry current and it calls for urgent attention. Finally is this image from Thomas Estate, a jar area of Lagos, showing a car taking a diversion because the road has allegedly been obstructed by a police station fence. Our eyewitness reporter says residents have had to spend an additional 30 minutes driving around the obstruction and wants something to be done. We do thank you for sending in those pictures and urge you to keep them coming. To legal matters, the Federal High Court in Abuja has set aside its earlier order freezing 16 accounts belonging to the wife of the former president, Patience Jonathan. The trial judge, Justice Binter and Yako, withdrew the order on the grounds that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which secured the freezing order, failed to conduct its investigation into the alleged infractions involving the accounts. Mrs. Jonathan had approached the court asking it to set aside an ex parte motion filed by the EFCC for continued control of the accounts. Mrs. Jonathan's counsel, Mr. Mike Ozekome, described the EFCC's motion as an abuse of court process. Justice Nyako had earlier given the EFCC 90 days within which to investigate and prosecute parties involved in the allegations, but it never did. Meanwhile, a federal high court in Lagos today ordered the temporary forfeiture of two penthouses valued at $4.76 million and linked to the former Minister of Petroleum, Mrs. Dezani Alison Madrike. Justice Mojisola Olatoregon ordered that the two properties located in the Kori area of Lagos be forfeited to the federal government pending the conclusion of EFCC's investigation into the ownership of the properties which the EFCC claims were procured with proceeds of crime. The EFCC, in an ex parte application brought before the four feature of the properties lists, Mrs. Alison Madrike, Donald Amago, Schillenberg LLC, and Sequoia Property Limited as respondents. A few months ago, a federal high court sitting in Lagos had ordered the temporary four feature of four buildings in Abuja and two states, Lagos and Rivers, linked to the former petroleum minister and her associates believed to be proceeds of unlawful activities. And still in the courts, a former finance minister, Nenadi Usman, has been able to secure the permission of a federal high court in Lagos to travel to the United States for medical treatment. Justice Rilwan Aikawa ordered that her passport be released to enable her travel from December the 18th. 
She's, however, to present herself for trial on the next agent date of January the 31st, 2018. Mr. Susman is standing trial alongside former Aviation Minister Chief Femi Fanikaude and two others, Danjima Yusuf and Joint Trust Dimensions Nigeria Limited, on a 17-count charge of alleged fraud of 4.9 billion naira. At the proceedings, a compliance officer with Zenith Bank, Mr. Teslim Ajuan, took the witness box to testify on allegations of conspiracy, unlawful retention of proceeds of theft, and money laundering brought by the EFCC against Mrs. Nenadi Usman, Mr. Femi Fani Kayode, Danjuma Yusuf, and a company, Joint Trust Dimensions Limited. Through the witness, the EFCC attended in evidence a statement of accounts belonging to Mr. Fani Kayode. The admissibility of the document had been a subject of heated debates between the EFCC and counseled Mr. Fanny Kayode, Mr. Norrison Quakers. However, in a ruling on the contentious issue, Justice Rilwan Aikawa held that the document had been properly certified by the EFCC. The witness then went on to narrate how certain funds running into millions of naira were deposited into the account of the fourth defendant in the case, Joint Trust Dimensions Limited. He identified the third defendant, Danjuma Yusuf, as the sole signatory to the company's accounts. The witness also testified that some of the funds were then transferred to the account of Mr. Fani Kayode. Moves by the EFCC to get the witness to identify the source of the funds, however, ran into a hitch, as some of the witness's testimony was not supported by the documents placed before the court. The defense team pounced on this irregularity and argued that the witness could not import into the document what was not contained in it. Justice Aikawa agreed with this submission, and part of the evidence given by the witness on the issue was subsequently expunged from the court's record. In the days ahead, it would be interesting to see how the EFCC proves the source of the funds and any legality associated with its transfer. In the meantime, Justice Aikawa has granted the first defendant, former Minister of Finance, Mrs. Nenadi Usman, permission to travel to the U.S. for medical treatment. The judge ordered the release of her passport to enable her travel on the 18th of December. The court also directed Mrs. Usman to present herself for her trial at the next adjourned date of 31st January 2018. She is to submit her passport to the Deputy Chief Registrar of the court on or before the date, failing which appropriate sanctions will be awarded against her. Shola Shueli, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, as the bailiff of the Federal High Court in Abuja is making efforts to serve former President Dr. Goodluck Jonathan with a subpoena to appear in court to testify in the money laundering charge preferred against a former National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Mr. Olisa Mitu, the court insists that Mr. Mitu should call another witness to defend the charges filed against him by the federal government. The court had on Monday adjourned to Tuesday for Mr. Metu to call another witness other than former President Goodluck Jonathan or give evidence personally to prove his innocence in the allegations against him, pending when the subpoena will be served on the former president. But Mr. Metu is insisting that the former president must appear as a witness because his testimony will determine whether he will need to take the stand as a defense witness or not. But in a short ruling, Justice Okon Abang held that the defense cannot hold the courts to ransom and thereafter adjourned to Wednesday for Mr. Metu to call another witness or in the alternative take the stand pending when the former president is served and also appear in court. Mr. Metu and his company Destra Investments Limited are being prosecuted by the federal government for allegedly receiving the sum of 400 million naira from the former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Mohammed Dusuki and used same for political activities of the PDP in the 2015 general elections. And from there we're moving on to Abuja where Linda Kigwe has tonight's details. Hi Linda. Hello Ladi. Now, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo is not happy with the recent killings in Numan and Demsa communities of Adamawa State following different clashes between farmers and herdsmen. Professor Oshibajo promised the residents of the village that the government will take more proactive steps to tighten security in the area. But the traditional ruler of Bachama Kingdom, His Majesty Honest Emir, wants the Vice President to help them arrest the perpetrators. 
Last Friday, four policemen were killed in the same local government by men suspected to be herdsmen, while two village heads were also killed yesterday. We are wearing gloomy faces on account of loss of lives that would have been abated. No right-thinking human being on earth will sit back and relate over a loss of a life, particularly in the circumstances in which we have been losing them. We pray God that this is the mark, this is due to mark the end of such unwanted killings in our lifetime and evermore. We're here to seek definite and permanent solutions to the problems that have arisen here. And I think that that is perhaps more important. Nobody can benefit from killing. Nobody can benefit from loss of lives. Nobody can say we have won anything at all by the killing of people, especially children and women. When that happens, the line is crossed. We must never allow a situation where killing women, children, even killing at all is allowed. It is a long-running problem. There are so many issues and all that. But it is a human problem. It's a human problem. It's not a problem caused by spirits. It's a human problem. And so it must have a human solution. The staff of Budget Nigeria, Moses Motoni, has been arrested by men of the special anti-robbery squad, SARS, in Kaduna after being allegedly lured to a designated area in the city. They have not disclosed the reason for his arrest, but Mr. Motoni was reported to have been tracked after taking part in a sensitization program in Bida, Niger State. This incident is coming a day after the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, ordered a review of SARS operations across the country following a social media outcry calling for the scrapping of a security unit. Mr. Mutuni is a project tracking officer of Budget, which co-produces Channel's television program Tracker Plus. Channel's Television is expressing concern over this incident and would like the operatives to handle the matter in accordance with the law and charge Mr. Mutuni to court as expected if found to have broken the law. And still on security, the River State Governor Nyeson Wike believes that the recent order by the Inspector General of Police for the reorganization of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad is belated. The governor says his series of complaints over the activities of SARS regarding the alleged involvement in criminal activities had fallen on deaf ears. According to him, the inspector general of police had also ignored his call for investigation into the security agency's activities and wondered if this recent call for reorganization will yield positive results. Governor Wiki was speaking at the government house Port Harcourt when a media organization presented him, visited him to present his notification as the governor of the year 2017. When we were shouting about the activities of SARS, they said it was political. Now that the same SARS are warning Nigerians all over the states, they have now been left to the when the IG took away my security agent for the election, and when we were shouting, nobody did it. Until when he went to Anamra and took the security agent of the governor, then I went to the regional senate. We are debating that, which means the senate president took one day, they will also take his own security agent. I'm sorry about that. Now, when the news at 10 returns, House of Representatives to investigate the circumstances leading to the suspension of the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission by the Minister of Finance. That's some business news. Join us again.